Today we're joined by someone who's dedicated his career to advancing innovation and research in Alberta. With a strong background in higher education and a deep commitment to fostering collaborations in the innovation ecosystem, our guest is a force. His leadership style is rooted in a passion for empowering others and creating opportunities for growth and discovery. As Alberta innovates and embarks on its next chapter, we're thrilled to have him on our team. Sit back, settle in, welcome to Shift. Welcome, folks. Today, my guest is Mike Mon, Dr. Mike Mon, uh, the interim CEO at Alberta Innovates. Mike, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you uh, for inviting me. Uh, this is my first, of course, Alberta Innovates podcast, so I'm excited to be here. Oh, we're so happy to have you. So why don't we dive in and, and tell me a little bit about uh, your background and then what led you to Alberta Innovates? Sure. Well, uh, first of all, I'll say that uh, as with all of us who have uh, sort of moved through this world over a period of years, I've had some great experiences uh, over the course of my career. I started actually in the not-for-profit sector. My research is in the disability area, and so I worked in the not-for-profit sector before going into uh, the world of academe, where I did a a master's and then uh, a PhD at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And that started my my uh, road within the world of uh, universities. I was at the University of Manitoba for 11 years and uh, was uh, a faculty member researcher and then directed a research institute that was focused in the area of health and human for performance. And my, my research area is health, so there was a good fit. Uh, and so that was a wonderful sort of uh, early part of my career. Mm-hmm. I moved then to the University of Alberta. So I, I left my home province of Manitoba. I left behind the mosquitoes in the cold weather <laughs> and came to Alberta where there's also mosquitoes in cold weather, but uh, uh, moved to the U of A and uh, was a dean of kinesiology there for a decade. And also for the second half of my time at the U of A, I also oversaw uh, health sciences. So I was the chair of the health sciences council at the U of A and, and had a wonderful uh, experience uh, uh, here in Edmonton mm-hmm. uh, during my 10 years at the U of A and really grew to understand Alberta Innovates in its very early version for me, uh, which was uh, uh, HFMR right. and organizations like that. But, but, you know, I'll say in those days as a dean at the U of A, uh, the um, relationship that we had with those entities and the support they provided to the faculty members that I had within my faculty were really, really important. And so that was really the beginning of my um, relationship with what is now Alberta Innovates. And these 24 years later, I've had many positive experiences with Alberta Innovates. And so I left the, the U of A in 2010, and I was president of the University of Lethbridge for 13 years. And uh, during that time, had a wonderful opportunity to help to support uh, the research and innovation ecosystem, of course, at the University of Lethbridge and in southern Alberta, but also more broadly in Alberta and beyond. I had the chance to chair uh, Universities Canada at one point, uh, so I had some some opportunities to really help lead uh, research and innovation from a national perspective. Um, so I, I finished up at at, uh, at the University of Lethbridge and was minding my own business <laughs> and doing some consulting and, and just working on a number of projects when uh, – I uh, was asked to consider coming onto the board of uh, Alberta Innovates. And so I did that and mm-hmm. was just in that transition when uh, I was asked a, a different question, which was what I consider being uh, the interim CEO of Alberta Innovates. And uh, so that was uh, not necessarily my planned career path, I'll say, uh, when uh, I was asked the question. But I'll, I'll say the you know, the... The previous 24 years of engagement with the different versions of Alberta Innovates um, led me to say yes, because uh, first of all, it's such a wonderful organization and so important to the province of Alberta, but also because uh, I think um, it is an organization that is continuing to evolve. And those kinds of uh, experiences uh, from a leadership perspective are interesting. Mm -hmm. And they're also uh, ones that I've had a number of, and so I felt that... uh, 
I was in a position to be helpful. And so that's uh, the theme of my uh, sort of arrival at Alberta Innovates as interim CEO is, is a theme of wanting to be helpful to Alberta Innovates, wanting to be helpful to the province of Alberta, and really wanting to be helpful to the uh, innovation and research ecosystem in this wonderful province. I love that. And it's fascinating that you've had all of this diversity of experience Yet it's all kind of within that ecosystem that I've been working in for the past 12 years in Alberta Innovates and those those ecosystem partners, whether it's U of L, U of A, you know, and that's that's fascinating. So as you take the reins here and you think about the direction we're heading, what what do you have in mind? What are the goals and priorities that uh, you have in mind for Alberta Innovates for the next year or so? Well, first of all, I'll say Alberta Innovates is on a wonderful trajectory. It has uh, continued to evolve and grow as an organization. Of course, uh, for those that are not uh, familiar with the sort of genesis of Alberta Innovates, we were at one point four corporations that had, uh, uh, you know, sort of unique uh, but somewhat related um, uh, areas of focus in in health and in in technology and energy, uh, the environment, etc. Uh, we then uh, came together and uh, came together as one, and and that journey of coming together has uh, been a you know a seven or eight year journey, and I would say the organization is still on that journey. And so part of what I'm uh, committed to doing and interested in doing is is continuing to help uh, Alberta Innovates evolve as um, one entity that has many, many areas of focus. And so as with any organization that has have uh, multiple areas of focus, uh, they have um, the opportunity to, of course, dive into those important areas such as health or energy, environment, agriculture. But they also have the opportunity to uh, look at how uh, one can build synergies between these areas. And so part of what I'm interested in doing is continuing to see how we can enable Alberta Innovates to both focus in these critical areas of, of uh, the province, for the province of Alberta, uh, ones that we shine uh, in, but at the same time recognize that the world is evolving uh, so quickly and in such uh, varied ways that um, – Organizations that take a more integrated and collaborative approach are going to be successful um, in the future and, and, in fact, are, are successful if they do so now. And so if I look at, you know, uh, concepts like One Health, uh, which is a concept that really looks at how health how we consider health in a much more holistic manner. In fact, it's a, it's a concept that was really, uh, you know, in existence with our Indigenous communities uh, uh, millennia ago, uh, who understood that, um, that the uh, universe uh, is all interconnected. Mm -hmm. And so when we think of health, we recognize today that environmental um, changes have an impact on health. We understand that this, the, the body systems, of course, are so strongly influenced by things outside of the body as much as they are things inside the body. And so understanding health as one concept needs to be considered much more broadly than in the way that we've historically thought about health, which is about the body. And think about health in a much more holistic manner to say, how does the world influence help and how do we help influence the world in a productive way to ensure that we have a healthier um, planet but mm -hmm. also healthier humans and so this notion of one health I think is a is a good exa example of how an organization like Alberta Innovates can shine if it understands how these interconnected uh, um, concepts uh, can be uh, understood in a way to enable change in a productive manner. And so that's, that's a big part of what I'm interested in helping Alberta Innovates to continue to do. I'm also interested in, in helping to support what is already in existence, and that is a, a tremendously diverse ecosystem of innovation and, and research uh, made up of many different organizations uh, in different sectors. And the, these eco 
ecosystems or this ecosystem, if we think about it in the most macro way, um, can benefit greatly from being uh, collaborative in nature. And so Alberta Innovates has been very collaborative as an organization for years, but there's more to do in that realm. And our, and our systems are changing so rapidly. If I look at artificial intelligence as one uh, example, um, we can no longer... Um, move through uh, our thinking about uh, things like uh, uh, artificial intelligence without thinking about it in a much more integrated manner so that we not think about artificial intelligence from simply a technological perspective, mm -hmm. but we think about it as it relates to all of these other systems that uh, uh, we engage with. And so artificial intelligence and agriculture, for example, are critical for us to think about artificial intelligence and, and, and of course, energy would be another example. And so I think Alberta Innovates uh, can continue to grow and evolve, but, but in particular support our ecosystems by really fostering a sense of collaboration uh, within our organization as well as outside of our organization. And so we'll, we'll be focusing on that in, in the coming months. We're going to undertake a program review to look at, uh, you know, what we have been doing, what we should continue to do, and what are some of the things that we have been thinking about that we should really be preparing the organization to embark on. And so um, it's, it's really a time for Alberta Innovates to both celebrate all the things that have taken place, but also look forward and say, where do we go next? I think that's, uh, that's very exciting, especially, you know, as we move into the future, the organization, we exist to kind of manage, quote unquote, that innovation portfolio. And innovation is always about how do you make things better? How do you improve things for Albertans, for businesses to, you know, to grow the economy, and and incur and and uh, make sure that Albertans are healthy. Um, so when you talk about used artificial intelligence as an example, it almost sounds like an enabler uh, across sectors, and it almost sounds like you're saying, how do we look at things not necessarily vertically, because we've got a lot of knowledge in at Alberta Innovates, InnoTech, and Cifer that goes real deep. These, you know, we've got a lot of real smart people, but to kind of flip it 90 degrees and look at it more horizontally and how do we integrate things, you know, so how does clean energy impact health and vice versa, so to speak? so to speak. Is it, am I putting words in your mouth or is that? Uh... Well, I, you know, I couldn't have said it better than you actually, <laughs> because, uh, there, uh, there is no question that, uh, you know, continuing to focus on the verticals that we have and, and supporting those areas because they're critical. If I look at energy as an example, um, but at the same time, as you said, look at the horizontal relationships. Um, when I was, a student doing my master's degree, I took a course in leadership. And of course, this is many, many years ago. So I'm actually proud of myself that I actually remember a couple of books I read. <laughs> and one of the one of the books I read was was really focused on this idea of lateral thinking, as opposed to vertical thinking. And, you know, this was uh, a long time ago, I'll age mm -hmm. myself, but this is in the 80s. <laughs> and even back then, there were... Uh, I don't remember them. Yeah, I Sorry. know, right? <laughs> Even back then, there were people thinking about this idea of, of lateral thinking as opposed to vertical thinking. And I think what's happened in our world is that more and more we've recognized that looking laterally is where the opportunities lie. Of course, you know, we know that they lie in um, in sort of the vertical uh, activities we undertake. But the, the innovation is more often than not these days across um sectors and across concepts. And, you know, so if uh, I use an example from my days at the University of Lethbridge, we had um, a cell biologist who was uh, uh, doing cancer research and actually came, was in France at a, at a research lab and came to the U of L to take up a professor position in cell biology focused on cancer. We had a scientist uh, who has been working uh, in space science. He's a physicist uh, and, and working on um, really um, different uh, strategies for looking as far into space as possible through micros or, or telescopes, etc. Mm -hmm. The two of them one day in, over coffee started talking about how could you use the technology that's being used to study uh, planets and, uh, uh, of course, uh, places far, far away. 
to look at, at changing cells in the body from a cancer perspective. This led to some fantastic research that was done in collaboration with the, the University of uh, Calgary and the University of Lethbridge and some companies in Calgary. And it was a, a, a tremendous example of this way of thinking laterally, right? And, and mm -hmm. Not just thinking that, you know, cancer research is simply about but people in sort of biology and cell biology looking at cancer cells, it's about how do we use technology to help those individuals progress the science around detection of cancer cells and, and amelioration of cancer. And mm -hmm. so there are many, many, many examples of that in uh, the work being done across the province of Alberta. Alberta Innovates is contributing to so much of it. And that's, I think, where the opportunities will be in the future. Right. I love that's a really fantastic example. You know, and when you tell me that here's this researcher in France who was attracted to the University of Lethbridge and recruited, that, that to me is such a huge triumph in and of itself that we can bring these, you know, that Alberta's created this space for research that, that people want to come to. You know, and we've seen that everywhere. I think of Michael Houghton at the University of Alberta as well, Absolutely. you know, who just recently won uh, last year the Nobel Prize. Um, talk to me a little bit about the value and, and of, of those partnerships and those collaborations. You know, AI, I think we've been pretty good at it over the years, but how do you see that evolving? Yeah, well, I think, you know, again, it, the word partnerships is is fundamental to, to the progress that we have made and the progress that we will make. And I think, you know, Alberta Innovates on some levels uh, could be thought about as a dating app. And so it's <laughs> it's an organization that has, you know, a lot of tentacles out there works with a lot of different partners uh, in a, across a lot, you know, a number of sectors in a, in a variety of, of, of um, contexts and in, in different parts of our province. And so part of what Alberta Innovates uh, is about and needs to be about it is really fostering that connectivity in the ecosystem. And so like a dating app, finding out who's out there that uh, would be great to work together. And, you know, going back to my example of the cell biologist and the physicist, uh, uh, I can assure you that generally speaking, cell biologists and physicists don't necessarily logically think of coming together, but they do sometimes sim by happenstance, sometimes right. because there's purpose full activity that brings them together. And I think the purposeful activity that Alberta Innovates undertakes to uh, support uh, work going on in the ecosystem, whether it's a, a really interesting startup that is just kind of at the verge of blossoming, or it's a, a, a an activity going on at the University of Alberta that is is really starting to come together, or it's uh, a graduate student who you know all of a sudden has an idea that is starting to take hold that is going to make a difference in in energy and the environment, and so the, the coming together of folks through intentional activities is a big part of what Alberta Innovates, of course, brings to the table. But the other thing, of course, we bring to the table are resources. And so, you know, one of the things about Alberta and Alberta Innovates is that we have been very fortunate to have um, f significant resources over many, many decades to support the evolution of, of innovation, science, and research in this province. And, and frankly, when I came here 24 years ago, it was, it was very much because Alberta was far, far ahead of the rest of the country in recognizing the importance of funding um, these kinds of activities. And, and to this very day, we, we as a province continue to shine in that manner. I'm not saying other provinces don't shine, but, but Alberta really has a unique way of understanding itself. And the way it understands itself is uh, we want to continue to be different. We want to continue to evolve. And we're not afraid of that, right? And mm -hmm. I think that in part, that's that sort of frontier spirit where we are not afraid to uh, push the boundaries because that's how this province started. That's how it grew and that's how it will continue to grow. And so Alberta Innovates is, is, has a bit of that, that frontier spirit that we need. And I think, you know, as a prairie guy, I grew up in Manitoba and my wife's from Alberta. So we're, we're, you know, deeply rooted in this kind of culture. And I see, um, Alberta Innovates and it's, uh, 
partners as, as being that sort of next frontier of activity that will help this province continue to grow. So if we, uh, if, if we think about that, what you've just said about partnerships, and we want potential partners to swipe left on the dating app, I think it's left, or I don't know which direction it is. <laughs> I've never used one. I, yeah, yeah, so to use the analogy is a little bizarre. Right. But anyways. <laughs> Fair enough. But I'm going to con- continue running with that analogy. So if we want people to partner with us, what, what do you recommend? Like there's, you know, a lot of our people are already, you know, they're, they're working closely with the post-secondary institutes. They're working closely with businesses, with the industry. How do you continue to say, hey, folks, Come, let's let's have that conversation. Let's have that dialogue and see where we can go and what, what we can do with this. And now let me just plant one thing in your head. Uh, in ventures, yeah. as a potential, oper- as one of those conduits for growing that, uh, those, those partnerships. Yeah, so I'll start off by saying, and I'll, I'll, I'll refer to in ventures for sure. I'll start off by saying that fundamentally it's about listening. So it's about listening um, to all of those um, members of the various communities and the ideas they have and and understanding um, the importance of recognizing that innovation is um, something that happens over time. It doesn't happen in a vacuum, but it does happen in part because of good communication. And so a big part of of the success of Alberta Innovates has been about listening and communicating so that we can find those those nuggets uh, that become real opportunities. And so looking at, you know, the evolution of, of Alberta Innovates and, and where we've come, but w- where we're going, Inventures are certainly uh, one of those um, uh, communication activities, those listening activities where we bring a lot of people together. Uh, we create a, a, some really interesting experiences for them, uh, of course, through speakers, but also through unique uh, types of engagement uh, and we um, uh, enable them to communicate with each other and they also communicate with us and we listen to them. And through those exercises, they learn, um, they, they develop relationships that they haven't had. Uh, they build new ideas and, and new um, uh, sort of versions of themselves, if you want to think about it that way. And we do the same. And so one of the, the uh, things that I have been thinking about in relation to Inventures is that Inventures sort of moving forward, Inventures 2.0 uh, can be about even more of that collaborative nature uh, of, of the um, entity. And so thinking about Inventures as driven by Alberta Innovates, but led by Alberta. And so in a sense, we are the, the catalyst and the vehicle for bringing people together across this great province. And of course, others from around Canada and around the world uh, as, a, as a vehicle for them to then express through all these different uh, experiences they have at Inventures, how we can grow and evolve as a province and, and more specifically in the areas that we focus on uh, at Alberta Innovates. And so Inventures, ultimately, I see as this wonderful vehicle to really grow that connectivity mm-hmm. and not just on a, a annual basis. I think the, the other opportunity for inventors is to f- see inventors, not just as a, as an event that happens once a year, but really as a, as a, um, an approach, uh, that Alberta innovates use to bring the ecosystem together, not just on an annual basis, but with regularity and look at how we can also tie into the things that our partners are doing, uh, whether it's conferences, et cetera, and see this as, as, as an integrated way to, to sort of grow and support the ecosystem in a, in a collaborative manner. And so I, I think Inventures is a wonderful, wonderful vehicle. I think it can grow and evolve. And I, in talking with the partners I have over my first period uh, as um, uh, interim CEO, it, it, one of the things that I keep hearing f- uh, from our partners is they want to be a part of Inventures. They want to be part of the visioning of Inventures, and they want to be a part of the success of Inventures. And so I think uh, Inventures is is a is a tremendous vehicle for us to do that. It can certainly continue to become that that kind of flagship yeah. uh, thing that puts you know helps put Alberta on the map and shine a, shine a light on uh, what's going on. 
let's let's step back a little bit, um, and I want to talk specifically about entrepreneurship. So, how do you envision Alberta Innovates kind of role in fostering innovation and entrepreneurship? Do you do you see us playing a role in starting to like help people understand entrepreneurialism is is a viable kind of a career choice, or is are we focusing mainly on those who have already done it? and or already involved and innovating? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, um, of course, you know, because I'm an educator, I think about things um, from a, a longitudinal perspective as opposed to just at, at a particular moment. And so if we think about um, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs, how do they become entrepreneurs? Uh, and we know that happens in a variety of different ways uh, through just happenstance uh, experiences, uh, through um, you know the the modeling that takes place uh, from individuals that they they meet, or e even family members, even right. you know parents who are entrepreneurs. And so, part of I think what. Um, this province has done and and can continue to do and should be supported by us is to really um, nurture this entrepreneurial spirit within the province in our in our uh, educational K to twelve systems, ensuring that students have exposure to uh, thinking about being entrepreneurs and and thinking about sort of alternative careers and not just um, you know sort of projecting to students that uh, success is based on being a professional, like a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, uh, or um, a, uh, you know, electrician, mm -hmm. whatever, uh, that, um, that, that there is great success in, in uh, uh, walking down those roads. But there's also success in walking down those roads, but doing so within the context of being an entrepreneur. And so part of, I think, um, what we can and should be doing is supporting uh, not only those that are already clearly inclined, but but supporting a, a provincial ecosystem that nurtures this notion, right? And I would say that um, this has really been part of the DNA of, of Alberta for, for um, many, many years. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I came here 24 years ago and moved to the University of Alberta, I was really struck uh, by how entrepreneurial faculty members were at the University of Alberta. Something that I uh, I didn't uh, see at my previous uh, uh, home academic home, and so as a dean, I was I was um, you know sort of challenged to. Uh, think about how do I support these faculty members who really want to not just uh, teach and do research, but they want uh, the research that they're doing to, to matter and make a difference, but also to, to be um, able to become something economically viable. Uh, and, you know, this was in particular in the health and human performance space. But uh, mm -hmm. then as I, I moved to the University of Lethbridge, I saw the same thing. And, um, you know, I saw the, the good, the bad and the ugly in that context. And I remember talking to a faculty member one day who was building uh, equipment that uh, he was uh, selling to um, uh, companies in Russia. And uh, he was doing it out of his garage. And I said to him one day, I said, you know, have you thought about, uh, you know, sort of taking it to the next level? And he said, yeah, but that's just, that's a lot of work. And I'm not really even sure how to do it. And so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy just doing this out of my garage and doing one piece of equipment at a time and, and sending it off. And, you know, th this is sort of uh, a, a, an example that is not... Um, uh, unusual. There are many, many scientists that are doing some really interesting things, but don't have that sort of sense of entrepreneurship that really takes this to the next level. And so it's about, you know, young people, it's about people in, in existing contexts where, where sort of a, a, a sort of, um, cue to think about something a little more entrepreneurial uh, in nature is, uh, or a spark is needed. And it, then it's about uh, ensuring that those that have the inclination have the opportunities, right? And so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a, you know, on many levels, it's a, 
it's a path that has ha, that has many different uh, turns left and right that need to be supported and Alberta Innovates and the province of Alberta need to be supportive of those different uh, twists and turns in the road that uh, people experience. Again, a fascinating example, you know, thinking about people that are building perhaps, you know, one-off technologies and then selling them. You might see stuff like that on Kickstarter, yeah. you know, or, or, or something like that. But to know that, you know, again, Alberta Innovates has been, we've been doing that and supporting for a number of years through our regional innovation networks as yeah. well out in rural areas and, and as well in the, in the major economic centers. But there's so many of our partners as well. And I think w one thing I look at is I was, I, I often think an entrepreneur walking into the scene and then looking around and going, okay, I've got all of this support, but it's almost overwhelming yeah. in a way like, I don't even know where to start. So do they, you know, is there, is there that person that's going to recoil back and go, I'm, I'm content doing the one-offs. How do we get better at doing those? And, and I know you've, you've already kind of answered it with the partnerships and stuff, but ex how do we get better at going, okay, maybe you're not ready for us yet for AI funding, but maybe we can bounce you off over here to start or Maybe it's someone that wants to start a hair salon that's not technology based. You know, we can still be supportive and conduits to get them to the right place. Business link, for example. Yeah. How do you see all that kind of? I, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's ha ensuring that we have a multiplicity of pathways that uh, are available um, that enable individuals to um, move in the direction and down the path that makes sense for them at this point in time, right? And so th this is why having so many partners is is important. And having organizations like Platform Calgary that have a lot of different strategies to support entrepreneurs that are at different stages in in that uh, in that journey. And so um, one of the reasons that I think Alberta Innovates has been successful is because it's recognized that, uh, you know, a diversity of accelerators, a diversity of, of ways to support these different individuals who are at different points in their, in their journey, uh, is really important. And so, um, not having a kind of, uh, one answer, uh, show, but having a multiplicity of answers for these folks. And, you know, on, on many levels, making sure that they're known about, because this is part of the challenge for, for, um, uh, people that w might not even describe themselves yet as entrepreneurs, but have Fair enough. have something going on that is a, a possibility that they are aware of the fact that something exists like Alberta Innovates or Platform Calgary or or Innovation uh, Lethbridge that they can they can connect with um, who can help them um, wherever they are in their journey, whether it's they never developed a business plan and they need to learn how to develop a business plan, whether, whether they actually need a lab to be able to actually take this out of their garage and do some testing uh, so that, you know, they, they have uh, those opportunities and, and ensuring that those are, are available in Edmonton and Calgary and, and around the province of Alberta. And, and I think mm -hmm. Alberta Innovates is doing a good job of that, I will say. But I will say that, um, you know, in chatting with different folks across the province, communication is so vital. And, you know, we, I wouldn't say we're the best kept street keeper. We're not. We're, we're well known. But some of the um, resources available are not as well known as they should be. And so I think there's just more work for us to do with partners to ensure that that all of those folks that have a particular uh, inclination or or don't even know yet that they have an inclination, but in fact they do, um, are not uh, left behind because they, they simply don't um, access the resources that are there. I love that. Yeah, it's that notion of you, you don't even know the word. Yes. So you can't, you, you, you can't look for it. You just yeah. have this feeling and yeah, no, that's, and that's fair. And it's a challenge because, you know, Alberta has 4.2 million people yeah. roughly. Um, you know, it's fanciful thinking to think we could hit everybody, but uh, you know, we've got to do a, a good job at getting the, or maybe a, a better job as an ecosystem. Yeah. And you know, the, the, um, 
uh, you know, many of uh, the things that we're doing uh, are supportive of this, right? Like working with the post-secondary post partners, uh, ensuring that they have the resources to communicate to all these young uh, folks that uh, may have aspirations to move down this uh entrepreneurial path we work with uh, lots as you said the rins and others so so the the network is there uh, and so it's 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 simply about continuing to support that network build it out further and also recognize that new networks will need to um, emerge as new technologies emerge as new ideas emerge and uh, you know so the strength of Alberta innovates over the course of its history has been to continue to uh, evolve, to transform itself, to understand that the ecosystem is changing. And so we too have to change with the ecosystem. Yeah, no, I love that too. Um, so now going back to what you, you just, we started the conversation off, you kind of described, provided some context of where you came from, how you moved into this position. So my next question is, when you look at Alberta Innovates, before you came in, you knew we were there, and then you came in, and now you're, there's more of an intimate understanding. Are there any particular projects or activities that you're looking at and going, that's really cool, that really... Uh, yeah, is- well, lots, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, the the bitumen project is one that it, it fascinates me, right? Yeah, looking bitumen at, beyond combustion. Yeah, yeah. That, that really looks at how do we... Um, reconceptualize uh, the use of bitumen uh, beyond um, uh, its contribution to uh, the e- energy world and think about it uh, in in terms of other uh, uses. This is, of course, not to say that uh, the, the uh, need for bitumen in the energy world is going away anytime soon, but it is uh, recognition that um, we should always be thinking about the, the natural resources we have and how we can use them best and how we can extend their use. And so, you know, the fact that we now are um, considering how bitumen can uh, uh, build carbon fiber, can build asphalt in ways that are uh, far less expensive and far less impactful uh, to the uh, environment is mm-hmm. fantastic, right? And if you think about it in terms of the um, the early days of, uh, of the oil sands and what was envisioned and what in fact has, has uh, occurred, and now that these many years later, uh, those same oil sands are being thought about in, in new and, and interesting ways, that is the essence of the Alberta story, I would argue. And, and the fact that our innovators are not satisfied with the status quo, that they are, are recognizing that, um, you know, all things need to change, right? I mean, Detroit is a good example that, um, as a city that really didn't think about changing until it was slightly too late. Now they themselves have transformed themselves, which is wonderful. And that mm-hmm. city is, is again blossoming, but it's, it's just a, it's a lesson, right? About the fact that, uh, if, if, um, cities, provinces, countries don't continue to, to um, think um, about the future and think about the future in relation to the past and how we can build upon the future, um, we will not progress. And so humanity has, has um, demonstrated that uh, um, century after century. And, and so for us, uh, as Alberta Innovates, to have a project like Bitumen on, uh, and Beyond mm-hmm. is evidence of that. And, you know, the work that's going on uh, vis-a-vis hydrogen, hydrogen mm-hmm. is another good example of that, right? Looking at a- another energy source that is uh, a bit cleaner that, uh, you know, we have uh, a great deal of, and how do we use that, harness that in a, in a productive way. But, you know, I also look at, at the work that we're doing in healthcare and the work in healthcare is fascinating because it's, it's a lot more system focused. It's a lot more, um, uh, um, considerate of how can we support, um, a very health challenging area, which is uh, healthcare delivery by, th- by thinking, uh, innovatively about our systems and how we help to support their, their evolution in a way that makes healthcare, uh, more accessible, makes healthcare as affordable as possible, 
but also ensures that we're bringing all of the f- amazing te- technologies available in healthcare uh, to people. And so uh, what I love about uh, the, the work going on in healthcare is it is all about innovation. But it's not about, you know, building a new um, piece of equipment. I mean, it is. There, Don't get me part wrong. Of it, yeah. Part of it is, is doing that. But a large part of it is much more systems-focused uh, innovation. And I think th- one of the reasons I'd like to sort of talk about that is because sometimes I think... Uh, when we talk about innovation, we we almost immediately think of technology. What's the new app? What's the the new software? But but innovation is is a lot more than that, right? It's mm-hmm. a, it's it's about innovative thinking that that lead us leads us down new paths. And some of that is uh, systems thinking, a systems change. It's not it's not technological change. And so I think the work going on in Alberta Innovates is reflective of. That. That. It's reflective of the fact that um, that innovation has to be uh, about more than just technology. It has to be about the uses of technology. It has to be about the changes that need to take place to support the evolution of technology. And if we look at artificial intelligence um, and healthcare, mm-hmm. um, we know there are some big questions uh, that are being posed uh, in, in that realm. And so part of a responsibility for an organization like ours is not just to sort of push forward um, into new areas, but to do so with a, with a, um, the, the mindfulness of what are these um, new directions um, uh, going to to do in terms of changes to our civilizations and how do we ensure that we're part of the consideration of those changes to our civilization and I think if I look at the oil and gas um, uh, context um, some of the work that's gone on in the last decade around recognizing that the work uh, in in moving forward with oil and gas innovations, mm-hmm. Um, it is work that has also started to recognize the importance of considering civilization and how civilization has been changed by uh, the oil and gas industry. And, and this needs to be part of the equation when we think about change. And I think Alberta Innovates is doing some of that good work, uh, but I would argue we can do more in that space. And I think part of what will spell uh, another kind of st- step along the way for Alberta Innovates is to look at those kind of um, critical, difficult, uh, integrated questions, right? And not shying away from them because um, somebody has to ask them, right? right? Yeah. And somebody has to be willing to uh, push forward and, and consider these things. Mike, it's tough for me not to get all fanboy y here. You're just, you're saying such fantastic things that I, I think will really resonate with me personally. I, I know will resonate with a lot of the listenership and, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's business as usual to a degree, but there's also that broadened thinking about, you know, ethical frameworks, for example, yeah. how to, what are the implications? You, you talked about the evolution of technology. Uh, Something I, I see in the system or think about sometimes is the adoption of innovation as well. We have such fantastic innovations coming out of Alberta, and yet sometimes you see that it really grinds to a halt. Like yeah. this, the system isn't adopting the technologies. I don't know what role we play in that. Do you see anything? As a- yeah, it's very interesting. You know, I mean, one of the, the wonderful uh, parts of my experience of being at the University of Lethbridge is I learned a tremendous amount about the ag sector. Uh, and, you know, I grew up in Manitoba. I'm certainly been surrounded by the ag sector, but I was not intimately engaged with the ag sector until I went down to the U of L and spent a lot of time in that, in that uh, realm because of the, the nature of Southern Alberta, just the sheer magnitude of agriculture down there, but the work going on at the University of Lethbridge, et cetera. And one of the things that, re- I, that I was very struck by in, in uh, spending lots of time chatting with, uh, you know, the farmers down there that mm-hmm. were, uh, you know, working in, in uh, the potato industry, uh, sugar beet industry, et cetera, was um, the extent to which those that really embraced technology were by and large the most successful. And um, that, in fact, those that you might 
have, you know, if you met them uh, based on their age, et cetera, you might have thought these are probably not the people Mike were, is talking about. And in fact, many of them were. I mean, some of the mm -hmm. most successful folks in Southern Alberta who have these, you know, massive, massive farms um, have, have just absolutely embraced technology and have demonstrated the extent to which technology ha has transformed uh, ag and ag business. And so the notion of adoption is an interesting one. And I do think that, um, you know, a lot of, of the needs around adoption are, um, of course, around education, but education within a cultural context, right? And so, so by that, I mean, if we think about the ag uh, sort of industry and, and sort of the, just the, the ethos of agriculture, I mean, this is a, a very unique industry that historically is family based is is you mm -hmm. know sort of a it's a it's a lifestyle it's it's not a job and so it really is a very different kind of um, context than uh, some of the other industries that we work with and so in in working within that space recognizing the uniqueness of the culture of agriculture and recognizing how to work um, within that culture with with people that are, have been uh, in the egg space uh, for uh, literally centuries because of families, uh, of course, need to be uh, engaged with in a different manner than, you know, uh, um, ar an artificial intelligence startup company. And so uh, part of this notion of adoption, I think, is is recognizing that every context requires a bit of a different approach to enable people to um, both be willing to listen and learn mm -hmm. uh, and to then um, be um, engaged with in a manner that you meet them uh, where they are. And so, you know, um, in working in Southern Alberta uh, with, with some very successful farmers, meeting with, meeting them where they are meant going into the field, uh, go, right. going on a combine with them so that they could show you the technology that they were using in that, in that piece of equipment and, and really getting to know them as a, a family and a community. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, we have so many communities within the innovation space, all of which are slightly different, many similarities, but also differences. Yeah. Um, you know, think about the oil and gas space versus the ag space is sort of two um, sort of different examples. And so meeting them where they're at and communicating with them in a way that is accessible to them, I think is a big part of adoption. Let me throw a little bit of a curve, and I don't want to belabor the point about no, no. adoption, but I find it fascinating. So let's think it within the realm of health specifically. So we've got a system, AHS, that's, uh, you know, this single single payer system that we quite often tout as a benefit, uh, you know, amongst all the jurisdictions. But I've seen or heard stories where we've got technology that comes out and it's just not getting adopted. So when you think about, you know, when we talk to a farmer, we can go and we can meet them one on one. But when you're talking to a system, yeah. how do you, how do you grease the paths, so to speak? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, you need to use, of course, different strategies, but you need to use a multiplicity of approaches. And I think, you know, adoption uh, occurs uh, in different kind of context and space. And so part of adoption is about educating those that are going through medical training, nurse training, et cetera, so that they become uh, the enablers of adoption, right? And so part of what, um, you know, of course we see in the health space is, you know, rapidly changing um, technology uh, and, you know, folks that some of whom have been in the in the health space for 30 or 40 years as physicians as nurses mm -hmm. as you know it's nurse practitioners and then we've got these young bucks coming in from our universities and our polytechnics and our colleges and you know helping them to be the champions of change and adoption um but also at the same time um, helping them understand the importance of the um, 
the the kind of uh, pathway that they're on so that they become champions but also they become folks that that work well with uh with their mentors and so these are these are sort of unique sorts of things but i think part of what um you know during my time at the at the uh, university of alberta when I, I i chaired the health sciences council one of the things we really focused on was uh, you know, an integrated approach to education of, of professionals, right? And so interprofessional training was a big part of this mm -hmm. so that we had, you know, nursing students and, and medical students and physiotherapists and dental students, et cetera, all having some of their experiences together so that hopefully when they move into, you know, their uh, professional life, that they have already had some experience in having conversations across disciplines that are part of the adoption piece. Um, but also then they become the champions for change, right? Because they have been educated to think about uh, healthcare in a different, uh, in a different way, in a, in a more integrated fashion. And so I, I think this is part of it. Now, you know, as we think about patients, which mm -hmm. is another big part of the adoption question, right? It's about ensuring that, um, you know, again, our healthcare professionals um, understand the importance of communication with their patients. And, you know, I, I'll, I will go back to the farmer example because, you know, the farmer example is about communicating with somebody in the space that works for them. And I would say mm -hmm. the same is very true within healthcare, right? Where, where our, our, our professionals need to be able to communicate with patients in a context and space that is accessible to them so that, you know, when they're uh, learning that they are uh, diabetic and that there, there are approaches to ensuring that they uh, can be uh, healthy and safe, um, that the communication style is accessible to that individual. And so that if there is, uh, you know, a, a new technology that is uh, which there are many of, as we know, that uh, can be easier for them to manage their diabetes, that there are ways to communicate with them so that they uh, will be um, open to that kind of technology and change, and they will uh, be part of the solution. Because a big part of the challenge in healthcare from a patient perspective is adoption, right? And, right. and, and <laughs> adhering to, you know, the, the practices that are going to be in the best interests of their own personal health. Now, aside from adoption, when you think about challenges, the greatest challenges that we have in the Alberta innovation ecosystem writ large, what do you think those are? And how do you think Alberta Innovates can help streamline those? I think um, the biggest challenge continues to be um, enabling the inter- um, relationships that need to exist across the, the different sectors and, and disciplines so that the opportunities that uh, are presented uh, to us and to uh, people in the, in the system are acted upon. And so, you know, it's, you know, in the old language, it's about continuing to figure out how we break these silos down because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, there is so much great work going on, mm -hmm. but the, challenge of our silos continues to be one of our biggest impediments. And if I look at healthcare, or if I look at, uh, you know, any of the, the sort of areas that we work in, uh, the siloed approach to um, innovation and then delivery continues to challenge us, right? And so a big um, challenge, but opportunity for Alberta Innovate is to be that enabler. And I think when I look at, at um, our organization, in relation to all the different uh, groups that we work with, we're the common denominator, right? I mean, we are the thing, the organization that links between all these different um, geographical regions, mm -hmm. all these different sectors, all these different um, approaches to innovation. And so it's a big challenge for us to be that silo buster and to be the organization that really um, works to foster the greatest degree of communication and engagement across uh, our communities. So I love that silo buster. So now if that's one of our roles to be the silo buster, let me put you on the spot. Do you want to, <laughs> do you want to issue a challenge to our partners out there 
uh, whoever, you know, we, we all, we've got tons of partners. We're bringing more on board. You can't silo bust by yourself. No, absolutely. And, you know, silo busting is a, is a team sport, I'll say, <laughs> because I'm, you know, I'm a sport guy. I think uh, many people know that. Mm -hmm. And I have a strong belief in, in uh, innovation being a team sport uh, because innovation in my um, sort of uh, way of looking at things, the success of innovation is in getting groups of individuals together, working it, uh, to a common goal and really sort of... Um, pushing hard to get that that uh, innovation over the line, right? And so silo busting as part of the exercise is about the team being committed to working together across purpose uh, so that we have success. And, you know, I'm an I'm a old football player, played university football, and, and um, you know, football um, – is is uh, not always the best example to use because there are some <laughs> downsides to the sport uh, um but the upside to the to the analogy of football is if you watch a football game the kinds of people that make up a football team are so diverse in terms of size skill um the the role that they play uh if they don't all work together you never win a game Similarly, and that so I don't want to just use a sport analogy, similar in orchestra, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's great to have a great sax player, it's great to have a great uh, violin, violinist, uh, drummer, etc. Independently, um, they can perform beautifully. Um, but if they don't work together as a collective, they're not going to be a great orchestra, right? And so those two analogies are, are about uh, collaboration and about building teams and, and moving things forward in, in that manner. And I think that's the challenge for the future. And the challenge for Alberta as a province is to work together uh, to that common goal and to really find the space for that collaboration that cuts across any of the other challenges mm -hmm. we may face, with, you know, different political leanings, different ways of looking at the world using whatever lenses, but having a common purpose around the, the, the uh, aspirations of our province. I love that. So now that's, that's the challenge for all of our silo busting partners. If you had to say something to entrepreneurs, potential entrepreneurs, researchers about the innovation ecosystem in Alberta, how Alberta innovates and our partners can help them, what would you say? Well, first of all, I'd say be brave because, you know, uh, such a, a big part of, of being a successful entrepreneur and innovator is the bravery required to just push forward and, and um, know that this may not work, but hopefully will work, whatever you're working on. But it takes a level of, of just uh, risk um, to undertake that. And because of that, those folks that are willing to undertake uh, that kind of risky activity need to have supports to ensure that they can be successful. And so Alberta Innovates and our partners need to be fundamentally supportive of that, that, that sort of, um, key, um, need, which it, for, for an innovator, which is to, to have that bravery and take on those risks. But, to do so in an environment that where there are supports. And so, you know, hopefully as we think about moving forward, we will continue to recognize what those supports are because they'll continue to change. And for us to then change to, to ensure those supports are available. I love that. So let, let's wrap it up here. Cause I've hogged enough of your time and I know you're probably pretty busy, but let's leave it at this or you, the final word to you on what you hope, the successes are and what you hope to achieve in that, in your interim year? Yeah, well, my hope for the success is that we continue to sort of um, uh, challenge ourselves as an organization to be better. Because if we're not challenge our, challenging ourselves to be better, then we're not going to be better. And so uh, that's the challenge I have to the organization and to our ecosystem. And, I, and my challenge is to help Alberta innovates be better by myself being better because uh, I've got a lot to learn. Uh, there's so many elements of this uh, innovation ecosystem that I'm still learning about. And so I have to do some more homework to make sure that I can be better. Mike, this was awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. 
You bet. I had lots of fun. Thank you. Me too. Well, thanks for joining us today, folks. And as always, you can find us on your favorite streaming service. Go visit and subscribe so you don't miss any of the great content coming up. On behalf of everyone here, I'm John. Have a great day.